Hey there, this is Ed Herzog, and in today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk about Elementor versus Gutenberg. Now, you're probably familiar with both of those tools already, but if for some reason you're not, Elementor is a very popular page builder that uh, works within WordPress. It's been installed on millions of websites throughout the world, including my own. And Gutenberg is the kind of block builder that is being developed by WordPress that integrates directly within WordPress itself. Now, one of the things that I've seen, I've seen you know a variety of different blog posts claiming that Gutenberg is eventually going to put Elementor, and not just Elementor, but other page builders out of business. And I've seen some pretty aggressive timelines on this. I've seen people saying, you know, within six months, eight months, one year, Gutenberg is going to just lay waste to the page builder field. And, you know, Elementor is going to go out of business, Thrive, Divi, Brizzy, you know, et cetera, Beaver Builder. Um, you know, all the, you know, that Gutenberg is going to be so good and you know, there's no reason that people are going to invest or pay for a page builder when they can already use Gutenberg for free. What I wanna talk about in this video is why I believe that's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely false, at least in terms of Elementor. Uh, you know, again, Elementor is by far the most popular page builder for WordPress. So it has an advantage over the other page builders. And I believe that you know, Elementor is going to be around for a long, long, long time. So particularly if you're thinking about upgrading to, to Elementor Pro, you know, my goal in this video is to convince you that, you know, you have nothing to worry about. Elementor Pro, you know, Elementor and Elementor Pro will be around for a long time. Um, so that's what I want to talk about in this video. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you what people think about Elementor today and what they think about Gutenberg today. So here I am on the WordPress page for Elementor. This is a page where you can download the free version of Elementor. We'll scroll down here to the ratings and you can see that by far people give it a five-star rating. 4,874 five-star ratings and only 124 one-star ratings. And of course, take in, you know, keep in mind that a lot of these people are rating the free version. You know, if they had access to the pro version, you know, they'd probably give it 10 stars. Uh, so, you know, you can see here that Elementor is not just popular, it's very well liked. People absolutely love Elementor. Let's go ahead and take a look at what some people say about Elementor. So we'll click here on these five star ratings and wait for this to load up. And here we go. So let's scroll down and take a look at this. You know, and these are recent ones. You know, this was uh, about uh, one day ago, really love. Uh, very easy to use for beginners, the go-to page slash site builder for a reason. This one I can't read because it's, uh, don't read Hebrew. I believe that's Hebrew. Uh, this person has some sort of, a, is mentioning some sort of little bug, but still give it a five-star five star rating. Uh, Excelente, I've loved it a lot, thank you. Easy to design pages with. Can't remember the life before Elementor. That's not my comment, but I would agree with that comment. Uh, good plugin, very happy with Pro. This person is writing the Pro version. Uh, great, I love Elementor, great plugin, uh, easy to use, awesome, great, best plugin ever, Elementor is awesome, great add-on, uh, 5,000 stars needed, not just five stars, uh, simple and intuitive, uh, the best, perfect, awesome plugin, I love Elementor, incredible, one of the best plugins, etc. You can see these are all recent, these, you know, uh, go back to three weeks ago, so you can see that, you know, uh, People today are giving Elementor a very, very high rating. So let's now take a look at what people say about Gutenberg. So I'm gonna switch over here. And here we are on the Gutenberg page. And, ooh, that is not good at all. 595 five-star ratings and 2,080 one-star ratings. Let's take a look at some of these one-star ratings. I mean, maybe, you know, Gutenberg has been around for a year and a half. Maybe these are older ratings. Maybe people hate it at the beginning, but love it now. Let's take a look and see what people say about Gutenberg. This is one day and 12 hours ago, not so good. Unnecessary garbage, about as terrible as you can get. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, remove it. Editor really slow and laggy after 500 plus words, horrible. Uh, worst editor, WordPress misdirection, worst update. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse. Gutenberg is terrible. Worst of all time, what a piece of, no Gutenberg, no cry. Uh, that's kind of funny. Why force people? Awful, still a pain. Junk default editor, avoid this disaster. Uh, too many bugs, what a joke. Major fail, WordPress, useless. Poor excuse for an editor. 
And again, these are fairly recent. These go back to one month and two weeks ago. So you can see all this hatred it's getting here from people. And, you know, we can take a look at the five star, you know, maybe now it's a little more balanced. Maybe, you know, there's at least right now, you can see 2,080 of these and 595 of these, you know, maybe these are older, maybe now there's a bit more balance in terms of, you know, at least a number of five star versus one star ratings. But, you know, if you go back, these actually go back further. These go back three months and two weeks ago. So again, the number of one star ratings that's getting continues to outpace the number of five star ratings that Gutenberg is getting. So my point in showing you this is that, you know, Gutenberg is nowhere near the level of Elementor right now. Not even, not even just the pro version. It's not even near the level of the free version of Elementor. And, you know, so the idea that within six months, eight months, 12 months, is going to be so much better than Elementor, or at least as good as Elementor, that is going to put Elementor out of business, I think we can already start to see is absolutely completely ridiculous. It's nowhere near Elementor. People, for the most part, hate Gutenberg. You know, I haven't played much with it, but every time I've tried it, I, you know, I would be one of these people who give it a one-star rating. It's just, it's awful. It's horrible. Um, you know, it's just, it's not intuitive. It's, it's, uh, it's a mess. And, you know, it's, it's surprising because um, WordPress has a lot of money. They have a lot of resources. And yet, you know, people have hated Gutenberg from the beginning and they keep coming out with more releases. And, you know, as I just showed you with all these one-star reviews, people continue to hate it. So, you know, maybe someday Gutenberg will be a lot better than it is right now, but it's not anywhere near the level of Elementor, not even near the level of the free version of Elementor. So it's certainly not putting Elementor out of business anytime soon. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is that, you know, again, one of the ideas that is advanced in this argument that Gutenberg is going to put Elementor out of business is that, you know, Gutenberg is free. Elementor and other page builders cost money. But I think that's missing, you know, some key points. First of all, you know, libraries exist, for example, but people still buy books. So even if something is available free, it doesn't mean that people aren't willing to pay for, you know, in this case, even the exact same product. You know, a book you can get free from the library. Sometimes people don't want to wait or they may just want to own a physical copy of it. Uh, you know, so they're willing to pay for it, even though they could have that same item for free. So, you know, that's just one example. There are probably other examples out there, but, you know, just, the, just because something is free doesn't mean that people, you know, won't pay for, for something. Um, so, but, you know, the other thing here is, you know, if, if you look at the prices for Elementor in particular, you'll see they're very modest. If you buy a personal license, it's $49 a year for one site, basically $4 a month. It's nothing. So yeah, it's not free, but it's not a prohibitive cost. It's, you know, very, very uh, low cost. You know, if you happen to run multiple businesses and want to have, you know, up to three sites, it's about $8 a month. Again, you know, what is that? Two Starbucks coffees a month that you might have to go without in order to afford Elementor? Again, it's not that expensive. And if you're a designer and you want to go with this one here and, you know, you could build up to a thousand sites for your clients, uh, you know, $16 a month, basically 17. I don't know. What is the math on that? Uh, 12, eight. Yeah. About $17 a month. Again, the price is very modest. I don't see a lot of people having a problem paying for this. Yeah. Of course there are people in some parts of the world who may not be able to afford this. You know, I understand that I'm not, you know, everybody has a different financial situation. So there may be some people who say, you know what, I can't afford this. I'm going to use Gutenberg, but those people wouldn't buy Elementor Pro anyway. So that doesn't really change the dynamic. The other issue, you know, that I think you need to think about is that Elementor is already installed on millions of sites. You know, it's already been used to develop millions and millions of websites out there. People aren't going to switch. You know, I'm not going to redo my site. Even if Guten Gutenberg would have to be so, it would have to be thousands of times better than Elementor for me to sit down and redo my site in Gutenberg or, or some other uh, page builder. It's just not worth it. And so Gutenberg may be free in terms of price, but there's still a time cost involved in terms of, you know, redoing your site. It's not free. Uh, in that sense. And so, um, you know, I would have to pay for that. I would either have to spend time myself. Now I don't have a huge website, but 
redoing it in, in another system, you know, we're talking one to two weeks worth of time. That's, that's a lot of money potential that I'd be losing while redoing my website. Um, you know, if you've got a bigger website, it's going to take even more of your time. And of course, the other alternative is to pay somebody to redo it. Well, you know, that's going to cost you a heck of a lot more than, than these yearly licenses with Elementor cost, right? I mean, if I were to pay somebody to redo my website, uh, again, in Gutenberg, if someday Gutenberg is actually a quality product, how much is that going to cost me? $300, $500, $1,000? Why do that when, uh, you know, unless, again, unless it's so much better than Elementor, uh, there's no point in me paying all that money when I can keep getting Elementor for a very, very modest price every year. Of course, if you're a page builder or if, you know, if you design sites for other people, are you really going to go to your clients and say, hey, you know, instead of using Elementor, I can redesign your website in Gutenberg and charge you thousands of dollars for it. Uh, what client is going to say yes to something like that? I can't imagine that somebody would do that. And so, again, the idea that Elementor costs money versus Gutenberg not costing money, I just don't see as a huge issue. Uh, again, at least people who already have Elementor, already have a built-out website on Elementor Pro, I expect the majority of those people to continue to pay for that. Again, the price isn't isn't a huge barrier. It's not a big deal for most for most people. And those who may not be able to afford these prices probably aren't buying Elementor Pro anyway. Um, and you know the other thing that that I think is important to think of is, you know, even if someday Gutenberg reaches the level of Elementor. It won't be exactly the same. It's not going to have all the same features. And so, you know, somebody could still, you know, even if Gutenberg is kind of similar to Elementor in terms of, you know, the functionality and how well it works, they'll still have different features. And somebody could still say, you know what, it's worth me buying Elementor because it has the features I want. Gutenberg is nice, but it doesn't have the features that I want. It doesn't have the features that I need for you know the sort of functionality that I want on my website. And you know, just to give you an example, there's a guy I like, his name is David Risley. I believe his website is Blog Marketing Academy. And he recently did a, a comparison post between Elementor and Thrive Themes, which is another page builder. And his conclusion was that Thrive Themes was better than Elementor. Now, I have Thrive Themes, I have a license with Thrive Themes, I like Thrive Themes. I personally prefer Elementor. I respect David's opinion. I respect the conclusion that he reached in saying that Thrive Themes is better than Elementor. Uh, you know, for some people it is. You know, it's, it's simply a different feature set than what Elementor has to offer. So, you know, two very kind of intelligent people can take a look at, you know, two similar products and come to different conclusions. And so, again, even if Gutenberg becomes similar to Elementor in terms of kind of being a quality page builder, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have the features that people want. There are still going to be people who are going to say, hey, you know what? Gutenberg is nice, but it doesn't have, for example, the pop-up builder that Elementor has. And, you know, again, maybe I, maybe I want to have this integrated pop-up builder. Maybe, you know, I like the templates that come with Elementor. Maybe, you know, it's got, uh, you know, the WooCommerce builder that comes within, within Elementor. Maybe that's the reason I want to keep paying for Elementor. Um, you know, so just, again, this idea that Someday in the future, Gutenberg will be comparable to Elementor in terms of in terms of you know just kind of basic function functionality. Doesn't mean they'll be similar in terms of features. So there'll still be people who will say, "I want to buy. I want you know here's my money. Take my money." So you know again, the idea that something is free doesn't mean people won't pay for something that is similar. So those are my thoughts on Elementor versus Gutenberg and kind of what the future holds. Again, I don't see Elementor going out of business anytime soon. You know, they're going to continue to develop. They're going to continue to add new features. And Gutenberg is so far behind, you know, I don't see them catching up anytime soon. And again, even if they do catch up, there'll still be, you know, probably millions of people. I mean, I don't know how many paying customers Elementor has. You know, I don't know how many people have invested in Elementor Pro, but I'm sure it's, you know, tens of thousands, maybe, you know, a million, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I expect a lot of people to continue to pay for Elementor because, again, it may have the features they need. Uh, they don't want to redo their website. And the cost is very modest. It's not a very expensive product. So I don't, you know, again, 
that's my opinion. That's my take on this issue. Uh, this is a video I've been thinking about for a while. If I you know, kind of got some time to sit down and, and record it, uh, I hope it kind of helps you see this, see this issue, maybe in a different light, a light you haven't hadn't thought about before. Um, and you know, hope this uh, video in some way helped you. I'm going to keep using Elementor. I'm going to keep renewing my license every single time it comes up. I absolutely love Elementor. Uh, for me, it was just, you know, I was using WP Bakery Visual Composer before, which, uh, you know, was, if you've ever used it, it's not, uh, it's not a very user-friendly product. It's a very frustrating product to use. So for me, when Elementor came around, I was like, yeah, take my money, right? And so I continue to, I'm loyal to Elementor. That's the other thing is, you know, I'm loyal to Elementor. There are a lot of people who, they've built up a lot of goodwill within the WordPress community, which Gutenberg has basically done the opposite of. And they've burnt a lot of bridges. And so a lot of people just dismiss Gutenberg at this point. And, you know, it may be years before they're willing to take a look at Gutenberg again. Whereas uh, Elementor has been the opposite. You know, the second they came out, people loved it. And so they, you know, they've got brand loyalty. So that's another reason why people, I believe, will continue to pay for Elementor because we want to see them succeed. We know that, uh, you know, they create a great tool, a tool that has made my life easier, has made life easier for a lot of other people. And we want to keep, uh, want to see them continue to succeed. So uh, I personally don't have any worries at all about, you know, Gutenberg putting Elementor out of business. Again, some other page builders may fall by the wayside. You know, that happens with or without Gutenberg. Uh, you know, businesses always go by the wayside. So, um, you know, that may not be the result of Gutenberg. It could be the result of something else. But uh, at least with Elementor, I'm confident they'll be around. They're obviously the most popular page builder for a reason. And so, you know, I think we can have confidence that they will be, uh, be here for the long term. So that's my take on the issue uh, and that's it. I uh, hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and uh, hit that notification button. That way you'll get uh, notifications when I create a new video. I haven't done many Elementor videos recently. I, they've got their, uh, they'll be doing the two-step form is coming out very soon. So I will be doing a video on that. But I've got other videos coming out on tools that can help you build and grow your online business. So hit that subscribe button. Uh, questions or comments are always welcome. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.